Hi everyone. So just waiting for a couple of minutes before we can begin. Um, so um, just right down. Right. I just wanted to uh, also uh, let you know that if you have any questions in the middle. Uh, just feel free to add to this chat window. Um, if you want to ask the question, you can just unmute, unmute yourself and then ask the question as well. We'll also try to answer the question at the end of this uh, session. And uh, right, so that is mostly it. Uh, if you all can also share your email ID on the chat window, even that will help me. So that I can just send an email next time. And add you to the kill link, like the invite itself. Um, that is up to uh, you. Uh, so I'll then get started uh, uh, for the um, for the lecture today. Uh, so today I wanted to kind of cover. Uh, so, so in this particular series, I'm, yeah, we're trying to kind of cover uh, basics of uh, data structures and. Uh, so, uh, we covered uh, in the last lecture. We covered some uh, aspects about arrays, uh, and this is uh, I'm keeping it very lightweight so that we just brush up uh, and our understanding of um, some basic data structures like arrays, uh, uh, key, uh, uh, linked lists, then uh, uh, stacks, and so on, uh, and maps. And like those are very basic structures that you need to kind of know to understand programming well now. Uh, so this will give you a brief overview, and then we'll try to do more complex data structures uh, later uh, in, in the world uh, uh, as we get time, right? Uh, so essentially what is a linked list? I'll get started now. So a linked list essentially is uh, a data structure that can store uh, data uh, uh, without, ha without keeping the uh, data in contiguous memory locations. So uh, let's say a use case uh, of this is, uh, let's say if you had to uh, ensure that let me just admit this person as well. So let's say if you had to uh, store a, a, a collection of numbers, uh, then uh, as we talked about in an array, these numbers will all be kept in contiguous memory locations. Uh, so let's say this is array A, the array would keep it in contiguous memory locations. And the advantage there is that you can access any element directly uh, in, in the array. So you know pretty much in an array that this element occurs at index zero, uh, right? And this element would occur at index one and this element would occur at index two. Uh, so just assume that you're given a memory map, which is, uh, let's say a memory that has, uh, that can store a hundred bytes, right? Actually, I should have removed the password. That would have been better. So, um, so let's coming back. So let's assume that this is uh, the memory of a computer system, and it can store 100 bytes. Uh, the way an array would get stored would be that the first number would be stored here, the second would get stored in, and the third would get stored in. So it makes it very very easy for you to be able to jump to any specific location, uh, right? But the, uh, the disadvantage is that when you have to delete an element, you cannot delete an element right from the middle because this, can, this chunk of memory is allocated contiguously. So either you can read, delete it uh, completely or uh, uh, you cannot. So those are the two only two options. Now, the idea is that in a lot of use cases, you might have to, you might want to kind of delete elements from in between or even at the end, uh, right? Um, so an example is like a queue where you are keeping elements in and then taking elements out of a queue, right? Or a stack where you're keeping elements in but popping it out from the other end of the uh, of the stack, right? So the other the other data structure that we kind of use uh, is where linked list kind of comes in is that you can maintain data in a linked list in an unordered manner and in non contiguous manner. So those are the like kind of advantages that linked list has. So the way it's kind of built is you can imagine a collection of nodes. So this is like a visual way of imagining, and each node holds two things in it. So one of the things that a node will hold is basically a value. So, so we call it value or slash some data in it, right? Uh, 
and ta and then it will also hold a pointer in it so the way this will kind of get built would be that uh, there would be pointers that point to the next element of the node and then there would be some data in each of these nodes right so this is pretty much the representation of our linked list right so this and so what are the advantages that this gives us is that now if you look at our memory representation you would have a memory representation which is something like this so uh, this could get one let's say this is the second memory location you could have two somewhere here and three somewhere here right and the way pointers would be would be that you would have a pointer from here to here and then a pointer from here to here and to give even more details you can assume that this is zero this is uh, let's say 20 this is let's say 90 right so the pointer at the memory location zero will essentially point to 90 and this will point back to 20. so this is the flexibility that um, um, linked list kind of gives us which is pretty much saying that you can have elements in a non contiguous uh, memory location and you still can uh, iterate over them and do operations with them, right? And uh, the advantage is that you can now independently delete this element two and just have a linked list, which is with elements one and three by just changing these pointers. So um, that is the fundamental advantage of having linked lists uh, when it gives a lot of flexibility and control over, uh, over the elements of, the, uh, of how the elements are kind of, uh, are are kind of uh, in in the in the particular uh, stored in the uh, in this uh, in the list right so that is the advantage so essentially that's the only difference between uh, uh, and the major difference uh, so what we'll try to do next is essentially understand uh, so we also talked about what are the elements of a list so the elements of a list are essentially there is a node and each node has a value and a pointer and then there are two more things. So one is essentially the head of the list and the other is the, uh, uh, you can imagine this as the tail of the list, uh, list or the rear head of the, uh, of the list. Uh, and these are usually used to kind of uh, point to elements uh, in the list itself. Now, we'll, what we'll, I'll try to do next is essentially take some examples of how you kind of build lists uh, using, I'm just using Python for this particular uh, 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 for this particular data structure, we can use any language, and I'll try to do uh, ask you all as well to give which language you want me to kind of do the session in, and we can do in that particular language as well. Um, but I started the, uh, uh, to go with uh, Python for this, and we'll what we'll do is we'll go through some operations. So uh, let's take some of the uh, definitions, uh, and I'll also e explain what are these, uh, what do these operations actually end up meaning. Um, and I will start with the scratch file so that we kind of understand, uh, right? Uh, so maybe a basic linked list, right? Uh, that we start with. Um, so essentially, this is an ID and IntelliJ in which I'm writing code, um, and I'll try to run the code and show you how these actually play out. Uh, so we'll first define what a node is, right? And the way uh, we kind of do this is we basically have a class uh, which is like an encapsulation or a data structure uh, that encapsulates uh, 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 an entity uh, with multiple uh, sub entities in it uh, so a class is an encapsulation of and a representation of an object and the way it's done in python is that you will they have to define an init method um, and uh, should have been init and you basically have to define the data which is being stored in the node and the next right which is the next element of the node itself uh, and the next element by default could also be none none means that you're defining something that uh, doesn't have uh, that ha doesn't have any um, uh, so basically none means some that is null so the next element will be uh, will be uh, something that is uninitialized that is what we can imagine as and I'll try to draw this as well as to what we are kind of trying to do here. So uh, we'll basically say that the node has a self uh, which is pointing. So self basically means that this is pointing to the class itself. 
and the data, the value of the data will be the value of the data that we've kind of passed. And uh, self next will be the next that we passed. And if the user doesn't pass in anything, then it will be it will be none. Uh, so if you have any doubts around something that you don't understand, feel free to kind of uh, ask me a question uh, here as well. That way uh, it will be easier. And what we'll do is we'll quickly define a node. So let's say uh, we say node. Uh, it's an empty uh, node with the data being one, right? And then what we'll do is we'll try to print this node with its data value, um, right? So essentially, uh, just to go back, right? What we've kind of done in this particular example is we've defined this node, uh, right? With just value one and next pointing to something that is null. So file like in maths is, is null, so it basically points to nothing. Uh, and this becomes uh, just an complete in, encapsulated entity, right? Um, so go back and try to run this session run and we see the value of the node getting printed as one right so we've got the like the very basic uh, thing in place which is the building block uh, one of the building blocks now we'll try to construct a linked list right uh, so linked list would be a collection of these nodes right so we first define this init method uh, right um, of this link list and uh, it's we can define link list. okay so the init method and then we'll have um, we'll define the head of the link list as we said and the uh, tail of the link list so you can define these and by default these are none which is okay right? so you can define that and we can even initialize the link list uh, with uh, so this is okay so this is one way of defining the link list and so, um, so this is good. And then we'll define some other methods. So we'll define a method which is say add element to the linked list, right? And then we we'll say data, uh, and uh, assuming that this adds to the front of the linked list. Right? And, Okay, um, can you hear me now? Probably was a little further away. Okay, okay. So I think, uh, um, sure. Um, I'll try to share it after the call, but um, yeah, yeah, I'll try to share it after the call. So um, just adding element to the front of the list. So essentially what we'll do is we'll say uh, if, and we'll define a little few more methods. So basically say this empty will basically give us an indication whether this list is empty. So if this self dot head equal to equal to none, then you can say return true else Right. So this is basically this method uh, is basically saying that if uh, how do we detect whether a linked list is empty? If the head points to a null value, then the list should be empty. Otherwise, uh, we can return a false. Right. And we'll use this method uh, later on. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll use this method later on to detect some things from the linked list. Right. Um, and I'll try to define another method up front, which is just saying that print. Uh, so I mean, just display the list. Right. So let's go there and then, so what, what in this we'll try to do is we'll try to emit each, all the elements of the linked list. Right, so this will just help us kind of debug uh, the linked list as we are kind of, uh, uh, adding elements in and trying to sh sh look at whether uh, okay. I see, but I, I see why I, I, I do think this is the screen that is being shared, right? Is this not the screen? Okay, so. 
Okay, okay. Let me just reshare it again. Probably might be something. I'll just go through the tutorial again so that way. Uh, can you all see it now? Okay, okay. So uh, I'll just quickly run through. Then uh, maybe we just missed it. Uh, so that, thanks, thanks for it. I think tail is not required. Let's just get started. So I just uh, was explaining that we'll uh, go with the building blocks. So the building block is the node of a list, right? Uh, and as we said, that a list can have a data and a next value. Uh, so the data value will be the value that the node contains, and the next will be the next element to which it points to. Uh, and um, uh, to define a class, we basically in in Python uh, we basically define an init method, which is basically like the constructor. Uh, of that particular object. So what we said was that to the constructor, we'll pass the data and the next uh, to the function. And self is basically kind of referring to the uh, object itself. So this is just a convention in which um, uh, elements are passed in, in, in Python. Uh, but what's basically happening is that once this method gets executed, a node will get created and the values that the node will have will be the data value and it will point to something which is next. Uh, and the next can be a node in itself or it can be a null value. And what this means is that you're defining the null by default. Uh, if nothing is passed, uh, then it will be assumed to be a null. So we basically gave an example wherein you can create a node uh, just by saying node equal to node one, which is saying that create a node with the value one and also print this particular node's value. And what we did was that we tried to run this and we saw that the node value it gets printed as one, which is expected because you created a node with just value one. Uh, so that was just one building block. And then uh, I was I started creating a linked list structure, which will be composed of many, many uh, uh, elements. Right. And I started to uh, create uh, uh, this method, which is in it, which is initializing an empty linked list. Uh, so I'll go with head. We'll come to tail later. Uh, adding it, uh, define the is empty method, which will be used to check whether the linked list is empty. Uh, and then uh, they, I started to write a display method to look at elements within the linked list. Uh, so the way we will do this will be by saying that you have a current and then current will be just another uh, placeholder or a, a value for a node um, uh, or a placeholder for a node. And then we'll say current is equal to uh, cell dot head right so we start with the head and then we'll say that while current is not empty so this is basically a way to so we'll use an iteration iteration is a way to iterate over all or go through all the uh, elements we say while current means that while current is not equal to none so we can also say this uh, this should also work um, but let's just go this will also be fine so and then we'll say um, just print current dot data. Uh, so this will help us just very uh, simply go through all the elements of uh, actually current has to be increased as well. Right. So this what will this will do is this will keep iterating over all the elements of the list, print them one by one and then uh, go to the next element. Right. Uh, so this is for increasing the counter. This is for checking the value. This is for printing. All right, and then we can try doing one thing. So let's also add an element. So this is required to for the for the so this method we'll use to create and add elements to the list. Uh, here, what we'll do is if uh, we'll first check if list is empty. So let's say if the list is empty, then you can say that head uh, sorry self dot head will be equal to the temp. So here I should have created a temp node, which is using this data. So you'll try to add maybe an element which has value one. So what you will first do is you will create in memory a node representation of that value. And then what we'll do is we'll first check if, if there was no element, then we'll just assign head to temp, uh, right? And uh, ensure that head has been initialized. And if, uh, and just return, because this is good enough to add element into an empty linked list. But if the linked list already has a method in it um, and we want to add element, then we can essentially, yeah, and to add element, we can add it to the end uh, of the list or we can add 
to the front of the list. So this is basically saying add it to the front of the list. So what we'll do is we'll first take the right. So let's see. It has to be aligned. So we'll first what we'll do is we'll take temp and say temp next is equal to self head. So that way at least we've put uh, the next of the temp into the head of self and the self head would become equal to uh, temp. Right, so we try to understand what we actually did here. And I'll also try to ensure that this is not incorrect. So essentially what we are saying is that we created this node, uh, a, a, a placeholder node or a dummy node for a period of time, which is a temporary node. Uh, and then this we've kind of already gone through, but here what we said is that we are also trying to figure out that what is the next element of the temp and the next element should be head because we want to keep the temp before the head, right? So just while you are kind of building this to try to visualize it as much as possible because that helps you kind of write code, which is, uh, that's what pretty much I do. I try to visualize it as much as possible. And then what we are doing is that we are saying the head of the linked list should also move to temp. Right, uh, because otherwise the head of the linked list will remain the old head, which becomes a second element. So that we don't want to do. So um, just going through, so have, we've added element, we've displayed, and we've checked this empty. Um, let's try to see if uh, this code works or not. Right. Uh, so this we've already done. Now we don't need. So let's say we create an empty linked list. Right. So I'm just looking at the code, then that's fine. And then we'll say. Uh, and we would add more, uh, like uh, more operations, but let's say, uh, and then let's add an element, which is one and just say display, right? Let's try to run this. I believe this should run. Okay. Uh, so let's, uh, so you, as you can see, it did display one, which very, pretty much means uh, that at least of element one was added uh, to an empty list. And let's make a longer list uh, which is saying that this is two and this is three because we're adding it to the front so just printing it like this uh, and let's see what happens now i think it should print one two three so that is fine so essentially what ended up happening was that our semantics of add element was adding to the front so we first added three then added two and then added one and you can see the list being printed in order right um, so uh, this is just one example of an operation of a linked list. Uh, any questions? If you have anything you didn't understand, maybe anything related to Python or something, uh, feel free to just unmute and ask or ask on the chat, uh, and I'll be happy to answer as well. Um, I'll try to go into more operations uh, to in, uh, further into the uh, uh, into the examples. Okay, okay. Um, so let's do more operations here. So we've done an add. Let's try to do an insert into the list itself, right? Um, and so insert would require, so let's first do it properly and uh, delete, right? And we can define the semantics of delete, All right? So uh, delete element uh, with the same value. Right. So it will be a little tricky uh, than the uh, than what we've done previously. And what's basically saying is that I'll try to delete uh, the within the list, uh, 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 the node that has a value of which is equivalent to data. Uh, and if the data, so if that number doesn't exist, I'll not delete anything. So that's pretty much the semantics we are going with. Uh, so how do you do this, right? So essentially what you will try to first do is, uh, as we did initially, right, we'll take a current, which is self head, right? So we'll try to start with the head. Uh, we'll say, uh, so let's take previous uh, for delete, right? So you need a previous, the previous will be none because nothing exists before head. And what we'll do is we'll say while current, uh, so let's also do this. So let's say if current is equal to equal to actually so if cell is empty. So usually it's a good practice while you're coding that you first figure out all the boundary conditions. 
and ensure that those are tested upfront, right? So what we'll do is we'll say, if the list is empty, right? Then probably you can't delete anything because there's nothing in the list, right? So just ensure that those conditions are kind of met upfront uh, while you're coding. And then if uh, it comes, if the program comes here, that probably means that the list is not empty. And so there are elements in the list itself, right? So we'll now, what we say is that, uh, this is okay, this can be kept in front. So we'll say that while current is not empty, we'll iterate through the loop. And what we'll do is we'll first check if current um, data is equal to equal to the data that you've passed, right? This means that this is the element that you need to delete, right? Uh, so I'm just thinking as I'm coding as well now. So, um, so what you need to do is you probably need to uh, delete this uh, element and uh, yeah, an easier way would be, okay, right. So what you will try to do is we'll try to say previous dot uh, next should be equal to current dot next, right? Uh, and there's a tricky situation here that previous can also be null because uh, maybe current is the first element, right? So I have to ensure that we are not making that mistake. So I'll think a little more about it as to how do we work around this, right? And uh, and what else do we need is uh, we'll need to adjust the, so if, right, right. So if let's say that current dot data is equal to equal to. So I'm just adding this as a simpler condition, just outside. We're saying that if the head, it's, yeah, so I was just saying, yeah. So current is equal to head at this time. So we can say that if uh, current, which is the head is beta, uh, equivalent, is equivalent to the data that you want to delete. And what we'll do is we'll say self dot head is equal to current dot next, right? And, current dot next is equal to none. So essentially what we are saying is that we are basically checking if the head is to be deleted, right? Adding checking the list is empty, right? And then if this is not the case, then probably uh, what, uh, so just return from it so that we don't you know, going down. And then we we'll say previous is equal to Current, current is equal to next. So what we did here essentially was that we checked if the head is to be deleted. If the head is to be deleted, then we basically said that uh, we'll delete the head. The way you delete it is you basically pick that element out of the list because now we've said the self dot head has moved on. And we also ensure that the, uh, the old head uh, which was pointing to the next element that uh, the next remains none, right? And the uh, idea there is to ensure that the old element uh, or the old node is still not pointing to the current linked list, right? So that is pretty much the idea there. Uh, let me just try to see. Okay, it's pretty slow, but that's fine. And uh, what we've done is that we moved the pointer ahead and we said that now previous is becomes equal to the current because this is the condition when head is not to be deleted. Right. And what we said is that uh, we've moved the previous to the current and the current to the next. So essentially the, you can imagine the current as a pointer on the list itself. And essentially what we're trying to do is we're moving the pointer to the, uh, uh, to the next element and ensuring that the previous is correctly updated as well, uh, <clears throat> right? Um, so uh, uh, that, that's fine. And now what we're trying to see is if within the list, if any other element has to be deleted, the way we try to do is we'll try to rotate through the list, uh, go through each element of the list and see if this, if the current data is equal to the data, which means that this any element within the list has to be deleted. If that is the case, then we basically perform the same operation, which is we delete the current. And what we do is that this is the case where an intermediate element has to be deleted. So what we do is we take the element which is before current and we take the element which is after current and we kind of join them. So this is the operation which will try to join them, right? So it will say that 
previous is next pointer goes to the current's next pointer and current's next pointer becomes none right so what we've done is that we've taken out the intermediate element we've taken a look at the last and the next element and joined them together right and this should say a return and then by current uh, if this is not the case then we move the current to the next so it's a little typical uh, there are many cases to be considered and that's why it kind of gets a little uh, tricky as to how do you manage it uh, so the way we we are trying to do is that we are trying to keep two elements which is previous and we are also trying to keep current uh, and we first checked uh, the boundary condition then we checked if the head is to be deleted because head is also kind of a special kind of a node and if these are not the cases then we basically uh, go to the next set of elements and try to check if an intermediate node has to be deleted and if that is the case then we basically uh, delete it and the way we delete it is by pulling it out moving uh, so pulling it out uh, and then pulling the pointer also ensuring that there are no pointers from that uh, deleted element to this list and then we kind of uh, finish or we keep moving ahead so this is pretty much the loop that tries to delete uh, this particular um, element right so uh, let's try to see if uh, if uh, this actually works out right so we'll do delete two and let's see so ideally i hope i haven't missed anything so let's see so ideally we should see one and three right okay 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 then that's fine i think uh, let's try to do something with one and see if this works. Okay. So three should work. Actually, this probably is, might be a bug, right? Because uh, with three, we didn't delete. We deleted three, but we actually missed two here, right? So let's see. This is the right. So yeah. Yeah, so probably on the last element there is a bug. So let's see. I'm just trying to debug and see what is the uh, trying to add more conditions to it. Right, right, right. Okay. So this should have yeah, so this probably a bug. So let's see. We said right so if it is the last element then pretty much what will happen is that when it comes here this current will point to the uh, to three and current's data will be equal to data which is fine that is okay and then previous will be i see also we didn't update the previous here so that probably is the issue so previous should be equal to current so that probably the processing it's usually good to kind of write all the possible scenarios when you're testing out uh, that way okay. 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 Three, three. okay so this is like a delete operation if you have any doubts anything uh, want me to explain better i can do that um, right or if it is clear then i go to a little more one more complex uh, example around how linked lists are implemented um, and try to use these operations to do something with that okay um, so one question that is usually very commonly asked is uh, if, like in, even in interviews is uh, this idea of like being able to reverse a linked list uh, and that's a very very common question they like a lot of companies will actually expect you to um, be able to kind of do this in uh, 30 minutes or less than that um, just end to end test out everything and do things like that um, and um, yeah and this pretty much uses the basic concepts so uh, 
uh, let's try to build this right so the idea is that you're given a linked list uh, which is uh, like something like one two three and you want to do an output which is three two one right and uh, basically kind of the trickier parts are around the edge conditions wherein let's say if the linked list is an empty linked list <coughs> one element right or more elements right so more elements is the easier case one and zero is the case where we would end up uh, making mistakes right uh, so how would you kind of go about thinking about it right so even before like kind of coding the idea that you could use is essentially uh, keep a pointer at uh, say uh, one right and have a pointer at two and what you can try to do is essentially uh, try to uh, ensure that uh, that we are kind of modifying uh, uh, so basically try to ensure that we are kind of modifying when we are modifying one uh, we know what the element two is and we try to reverse the uh, pointer from two uh, back to one right so essentially the way the linked list will be actually built will be something like this and in this i think we'll have to use uh, tail as well to be able to so the linked list will be built something like this right and um, Essentially, the trouble that we'll end up being is that if, let's say, you modify two, uh, you might end up losing this pointer to three, right? So that's pretty much the trouble that can end up happening when you're jumping, um, ensuring that uh, two actually points back to one, right? So there are different ways to kind of work around this. You can uh, one way is you can just remember what two points to. Uh, so we'll use that technique uh, and uh, kind of uh, uh, jump to three when we have already modified two right so essentially looking at the um, and uh, uh, the the, uh, the easiest case and starting from there right so essentially to reverse we'll first kind of go and say if um, if the self is empty right so then you probably return because there's nothing to reverse right um, else what we'll do is we'll start with previous equal to none and we'll say uh, because um, and current we'll take it to be um, self's head and uh, we can also take next which is um, this so next element which will be equal to current dot next right so at least now we have three elements we're pointing to one right and what we'll try to do is we'll try to say while So what we'll try to do is we'll try to check whether current is, and feel free to ask questions in between as well. So that will also help. So let's say if the current is, uh, while the current is there, so we'll ensure uh, that right. So this is fine. And now the operation that we want to do is we want to ensure that uh, the current next becomes previous right because you want to uh, so just assume that this is the situation we are in and we'll correct the code accordingly uh, so if, if let's say we are at current we are at two then you want its next to point to one which is the previous element you want uh, so that is the operation that you want right and this will ensure that now two points to one and uh, subsequently all the elements will get flipped um, and uh, eventually we need to update current so current has to be uh, has to go to the next element right so now right so this is fine we need to update all the other elements as well so we we'll have to update previous which has to be current so this has to go above right? so we first update uh, the previous so previous was let's say if, if we are in just in this condition and we'll worry about the head and the tail conditions later but let's say if we were in this condition previous was one so previous has to go to two so previous becomes two current was two and then current has to go to three so current becomes three um, and next element which we are keeping is has to be next element was essentially three so next element has to be next elements 
for the next. I think next element probably is not even needed here. Uh, you can just bypass, but we're keeping it for our own understanding and ensuring that we don't make a mistake, right? Uh, so, so what we've kind of done is that we said that we'll try to reverse it. Uh, if the list is empty, we'll just do nothing. Uh, if it is not, then we'll keep the head in the correct and then have previous as the num because before one there is nothing and next element we will keep as the uh, next out, out of the current, current next. So this is fine. Now as we are kind of doing through current, uh, right? what we said that current next should become previous um, and the idea here is essentially to be able to um, say that we are able to reverse uh, current next. So this is fine, previous is current, current is uh, next element because uh, you move the previous, you move the current, you move, so you're basically moving all the elements, right, forward. Okay, all the elements forward. So this is also fine, or pointers, you can say uh, uh, pointers forward. Um, this is not pointers, they are basically placeholders, uh, right? So this is all okay. Now, let's say if uh, the uh, list was, um, so initially the kind of things you have to imagine is what if the list had just one element? Would this program still work with reverse, right? Uh, so let's think of a list which is just one and run through it. Uh, so this is called dry running or debugging with just a dry run mode. Uh, and there what will end up happening is we'll just walk through the code. So we'll say if the element, uh, if the list is one element, empty will return false. Previous will be none, current will be one. And next element would be current next, which will also be none. And then we'll have uh, while current, uh, which is okay. Uh, so current will be not none because it's pointing to the node, which has one element. And we'll say current next will be previous, uh, which is okay because previous is none and current next should also be none. And we'll move everyone ahead. Uh, so previous will become one, current will become none because current next was none. Next element would become next elements none, right? So this probably will cause issues, right? Because now, the trouble is that um, you could have uh, so next e only if next e is not null. So this is like uh, we basically caught a bug. Otherwise, we would have run into a null pointer exception, um, right? So I'm just trying to ensure that we don't end up. So one of the things uh, in a bad position, but one of the things that we kind of missed was just the head of the self, right? Now, uh, sorry, uh, the head of the linked list we haven't updated, so that could be a uh, thing as well. Uh, but in a reversal position, like in a reversal of linked list, we don't probably need to, right? Because uh, actually we would have to, right? So the head next has to be. So because uh, once you move this, you will probably have to uh, keep the head, right? And the and there are actually different ways of doing it, but what we'll have to do is, Okay, sorry. So we'll have to ensure that the head also points to, uh, so the list will become something like this, where you have uh, two. But even with this program, the head would still point to one, right? So the way we'll try to do is we'll try to update the head as well. So the way to do it would be to, by the end of it, right? So Right, right, right. So once you come out of it, you could say that self head is equal to previous. Now, question is, would this, uh, yeah, would this work or not? Right. So that would be the question here. And uh, so trying to, yeah. So the idea that I'm trying to think is that once when this uh, loop ends. We will have, uh, so this will point to, let's also add a none. So this will be easier to understand. And what what will happen is that current will go to none, right? So the current will go to none and previous will be at three, which is, which should be the self head, right? So just that kind of intuition quickly helps you kind of figure out that how do you update self head? Uh, and this has to go outside the loop, right? Because uh, keeping it inside the loop seems to be incorrect to me uh, because uh, you keep updating the head multiple times, which is not really needed. It has to go outside the loop. I'm just trying to ensure that I have indented the code correctly. I think maybe it is saying that right. 
this should be outside then. Okay. So reverse thing. Yeah, the indentation is kind of a little off. Let me just do that as well. And then we'll debug and then kind of close this out. Uh, yeah, so I understand it should work fine. So, yeah, I don't know why it's still complaining, but hmm. next year, then kind of fine. And then, right, right. okay, let's. So we build this a little. Uh, so you can do a display and then you can do a reverse. I'm sure that indentation is right. So delete is there. So maybe we didn't complete this, right? So okay. So probably complain somewhere in between. Right. So, let's check. Let's see. This is okay. Then. Should be independent of that. Screwed up. I see. Clear with I think it should have accepted it. Yeah, yeah it doesn't seem right to me somehow. So let me see. It's taking these. Yeah, I'm not pretty sure I think why this is now we can copy it to a new that could help me just try to reduce the code as well. So yeah, it's code that we don't need. This is okay. Even this probably is not required. Let's just get some clear. Yeah, the indentation is slightly tricky in this. Yeah. Okay. So 
two. Surface current makes element by current. Okay, so I do run this in this case. If I think if this is should be outside, that's what I remember. Probably should be outside the loop as well. So it's not the case. Ah, I see. Yeah, sorry for this. Should be fine. Yeah. So let's try to close this. That is what I try to do at the end. Attribute and consumer users. Yeah. This is okay. Let's do it. Yeah. So I think code was fine. Just the indentation was screwed up because of this. Um, but yeah, I mean, what we can see is that it kind of does reverse with one, two, three, four, and then gives four, three, two, one as the output. Right. So what, what I did was that I added all the elements. Displayed them, reverse them, and then displayed them again. Uh, right, um, and that pretty much is. Um, uh, and this is an important, like, kind of question. Just gives you an like uh, idea of what kind of question actually get asked. Uh, like, this will be like a very warm up or a beginner kind of question, but uh, they will expect you to be able to answer it quickly. Kind of uh, check many conditions around it as well. And uh, it will be a good check of how well can you can imagine the list being kind of changed in, in your own head. Right? So that is pretty much um, what is uh, important in coding as well. So let's see, one is fine. I'm just trying to ensure that it doesn't like kind of crash in, in any condition. And right, so probably there is a bug. Some some case might be a bug which reverse probably yeah. So I think it's so I had to remove this. I was thinking it's not required, but it's okay. So this was about right. Uh, so yeah, if there are any questions, uh, I also wanted to cover like queues and stacks, but I'll try to do it next time, uh, and also ensure that we don't run into indentation issues. Uh, but if there are any questions uh, around, uh, just how can you uh, like understand lists and how it is used, how you can you code up with lists, right? Because there'll be a lot of applications people will ask uh, as well around that, that might use linked lists. Uh, like there are doubly linked lists and there are many more examples of linked lists. So just getting the basics right uh, and being able to like write this code in front of like people and like there'll be an interviewer that you, that you would have. So being very comfortable with these ideas will help a lot. So any questions, anything that you want to ask, Feel free to ask me, uh, it be good for discussion. Um, and I'll also ask you guys to uh, just add your uh, uh, email IDs here as well. So that will make it easier for me to send updates next. And you can mute and bring this. So. Okay, sure, sure. So I think I'll also try to give some coding exercises as well, uh, trying to figure out where to kind of give them so that uh, we can track as well. Um, um, so that will help. Like if you do a few coding exercises with lists, then it'll just these uh, concepts will get very well cemented in your head and you'll know where you're kind of missing some of the ideas uh, because it gets very tricky, especially the edge conditions. You see like even uh, there were some like mistakes when we made during this, right? So, uh, and it's very good to be able to quickly debug and fix them, uh, especially when you're a little under pressure as well. So that's important, uh, especially for interviews. Uh, but that's, I think, it for today. I think I will not extend session more. Uh, and uh, we'll do a more uh, advanced session on lists, like using stacks and building stacks and queues. Um, that should be, I think, useful. Um, like, uh, just understanding linked lists. Uh, 
Uh, other than that, I think there are basic implementations of lists in Python directly. You can use them, but uh, it's good to have a first principle understanding of data structures. So that way, you if you get stuck or if you have to understand time complexity analysis, like those kind of things, you need to know the basics, right? Uh, so this should give you some good idea of it, right? And I'm also posting uh, small bit size videos of data structures, so you can look at them as well. That will also help brush up your concepts okay uh, feel free to ask me any questions uh, i am also scheduling some like mock interviews if uh, people want to do that uh, especially if you are uh, looking to interview um, so i'll give you a perspective of what uh, interviewers think uh, when you are uh, giving your answers and that could help you in improving what you do in an interview so okay okay thank you thank you so much for everyone participating and uh, giving your time here uh, I just request you to give me the email ID so that next time I don't have to kind of post it at many places. I just post it on your Gmail ID and you would be there. Right? So that would help. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Stop.